What do foreign countries need to start a venture in Pakistan? Interesting question, right? For a country to uh, open themselves up to a large, to a for foreign entity to, to want to come and open uh, up a venture in the, on the shores, a lot of things have to be done right. Otherwise, the level of confidence would simply not be there for them to, to want to undertake this journey and with, with all the risks that sort of that go along with it for them to want to do this. So let's go ahead and figure out and study what are some of the factors that Pakistan could do to enable the foreign companies to feel comfortable in starting a venture in Pakistan. Let's see what the factors are. What do they need? They need a stable government. Don't need to say anything else. It's, it's really a first thought that comes into anybody's mind. Do they have a stable environment? Do I feel safe? So again, stable government. Stable government is not just a factor of who's ruling the country and which right or left, which political party is, is leading at that precise moment in time. Stability simply means that my long-term interests, are they safe or not? Or, or are they subject to whoever, whoever is in the party and the next person or the next entity that comes on board, they may come, come back and revamp, reset all the agreements I've had with this, with this, with this government. We, we do not want to have an unstable environment like that. So very top of the list is, what if the question that we're trying to address is, what can Pakistan do to enable foreign companies to want to come and start a venture in Pakistan for them to feel comfortable in starting a venture in Pakistan, the top of the list has got to be stable government. And then no hindrance due to bureaucracy. Every country has got bureaucracy and, and you know, whether it's the country, at the country level, at the city level, even applying the permit to start a new business. It could be it could be a months long process. It could be a process fraught with with steps, with perhaps levels of corruption, all kinds of forms that have to be to be filled out, all all the che the checkpoints, the checklists that have to be to be to be filled out, all kinds of, of issues. And there comes a point in the life of every entrepreneur when they say, you know what, is it really worth it? So we need to, in an ideal world, we want we want to remove or minimize as much as possible all the bureaucratic red tapes that could that would potentially be hindrances for companies before, before they start a venture in Pakistan. What else would the, these countries, uh, these companies desire or request? No problems with law and order. Again, enough said about that. No problems with law and order. If they want to have seamless operation. They don't want to every once in a while be have, hear a knock on the door with someone carrying guns. God forbid, and and uh, disrupting their operation or the the personal lives uh, of their uh, of their executive team or of their workers. We, nobody wants that. So for anyone to feel comfortable in coming to Pakistan, this has got to be on top of everybody's list. No problem with law and order. And then the infrastructure needed to to operate a successful operation. Which, and this is just two bullet points here. And trust me, when we start probing deeper into onto this topic, we'll probably have 200 of these types of bullet points. What are they right now? Transportation as needed. So I'm setting a company which is maybe 150 miles away from the port. The raw material will arrive by from uh, by, by 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 ship by 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 a container 150 miles away from the from my from my factory. How will they get to me? How will my finished products, once they are packaged and, and loaded on a truck, how will they make up make up to the port so therefore they're able to get on a container and go and go abroad? Transportation is just one part of it. Uninterrupted access to supplies, to utilities. Will I have an operation where I'm uh, I need to shut down my factory twice a week or ten times a week for that matter, just because the utilities are not available. I run out of water, run out of electricity, run out of gas if that's what's needed for my for my high temperature uh, furnaces, whatever operations I'm, I'm, I'm trying to trying to run, I need to make sure that there is uninterrupted supply of resources that I need to be able to operate. What else would, con would companies require? Access to a healthy, rich talent pool. Again, uh, no, uh, no, no, no doubts about this. That. I would want to go to a country where if I need to hire talent, hire resources, I can readily find them. I don't want to be in a country where everyone who's working in the country is coming from a different place, which means not just sourcing becomes a challenge, becomes a problem, the training becomes a problem, the logistics for those people, for me to fly them out from somewhere else and put them to that country, that becomes a challenge. So Pakistan could really, really benefit by developing the skills 
that these countries that these companies would require, make them readily available. So therefore, they'll feel they're confident that if they are to come to Pakistan, assuming all the other bullet points are provided and they are checked off, they'll have access to a healthy pool of, of talented people who can come and hit the ground running and help them run the whole organization at all levels of management. Access to a directory of reliable and certified supporting service providers. Think of it this way that every company in the, all of their operation, they have so many touch points with, with external agencies that they cannot, under one umbrella, under one roof, bring everything in-house. They need to deal with, with other vendors. You may have to deal with shipping vendors, for example, or maybe you have outsourced the whole warehouse management. You're dealing with the different companies that the company which does that. Even patch, packaging itself, even labeling itself could be provided by a different company. Maybe support could be provided by a different company. So so every company should, in an ideal world, and we've got separate presentations on this topic as well, every company is, is well um, uh, um, as, as suggested. A strong recommendation is for a company to focus on the core competence and let other ancillary service providers to come in and, and, and figure out all, all the ancillary uh, services that the companies would require. So again, if you've got a, 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 a directory of reliable certified companies that as a business owner I can reach out to and they'll help me take care of the things as if they are, I'm doing it under the same roof, it's a huge, huge benefit that any company would enjoy. So again, if Pakistan was to become that haven for foreign companies to come and venture in the country, this is something that we must be able to provide, provide to them. Ability to purchase raw material locally or from abroad. If I'm manufacturing um, a pharmaceutical products in Pakistan, all the raw material, which means all the, 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 the packaging or the vials or the, uh, the chemicals themselves, they must come from somewhere. Either I must have a place locally sourced, which is available, readily available, based on demand, just in time availability of the uh, of the raw material that I would need within my factory to be able to complete my, my, my manufacturing. It must be available. Or if it needs to come from abroad, fine, that could be a possibility as well. But those avenues, those channels must be well-oiled, well-defined, available, readily available, without any obstruction, without any blockages. They must always be, a, be at my disposal. I should never, ever be at the mercy of the elements of the the global uh, geopolitical situations which could potentially hamper my operation. Nobody would feel confident in that kind of a scenario. So very, very critical bullet point for all the raw material that I would need to be able to succeed as, as a company in a different country. I would want all the raw material to be available and readily, whether they come locally or they come from abroad. Let's keep going. Ability for the, for the countries to be able to export their goods abroad without any restrictions. Again, if I'm, let's say I'm setting up a shop in Pakistan and I'm manufacturing a certain widget and the widget is obviously, it could be sold to the local market as well, but a large predominantly is being exported to a different country. So I need export channels, avenues to be available and readily available without any impact. Again, straightforward enough, right? That we all understand what it is that countries would require. Again, this is a, this is a critical item. We do, we do not want to be in a situation where we are producing the goods and they're just stockpiling within our warehouse and, and, and the export avenues have been shut down. Even if it's, it's a temporary outage, we do not want that. These companies would also require a vibrant local economy, a vibrant group of local consumers who are willing to, uh, to to use the products, use the goods or services which which are being produced under under my under my uh, under my roof. Again, the point that we just made earlier: every good that is being produced in a country is ideal if the good is consumed locally as well, because obviously freight is expensive, and for us to maybe ship everything abroad. That will obviously have to come at a, at, a, at a price, and if the price is right, then maybe it might make sense at some level. But if it's being absorbed locally, then it's, it's really the best avenue. If you're developing something, uh, a, a gadget, for example, that is uh, you've got a strong local market, that's all the more of a reason why somebody would want to come and do the manufacturing in that area as well, just so we could absorb, we could tap into the local uh, consumer market as well. 
And then once, of course, every, all, everything is done and everything is done well, that as my company in Pakistan would hopefully be profitable, right? That's the only reason why I would want to do this. If it's profitable or when it's profitable, I would want to have the option to be able to take the profits abroad without being subjected to any uh, any limitations, any and any factor that could be geopolitical related, it could be economy related in general, will impede my ability to be able to take my profits abroad and pay dividends to my stakeholders. And then uh, the visas for the executives and their other employees of the companies to frequently visit Pakistan. Clearly, enough said, right? That if I'm running a factory in Pakistan, I would want my executives to be able to go and visit them as often as possible. Maybe live in Pakistan if that's what it takes. And when they go back and forth, for them to be able to take along their families as well. In a different uh, presentation, we talked about the reasons why somebody would have to want to visit Pakistan, and we said tourism could, was, was on top of that list. These people, when they go to the country with their families, with their loved ones, with their cousins, with their siblings, and they want to go and explore the place, let them explore the place. Let them make, make, it, make it easy, make it convenient for them to go and uh, not just visit the, the factory uh, in Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, but for the rest of the time, go and explore the local restaurant, go and explore the, be a part of the local economy, go uh, help us grow and, and expand their own horizons about the country as well. And then uh, another factor that's important for these com com uh, uh, companies is uh, a positive quality of life for the families when they accompany the key worker. And then finally, arbitration and other support in case of any conflicts or disagreements. Well, everything we've talked about so far is sort of underlying the best case scenarios where everything is going according to the plan. You set up the shop over there, you've got the manufacturing, you've got the raw material uh, available, you've got the right talent uh, ac accessible to you, set up the shop, uh, no hindrances from of any kind and whatever, it, even if there are some hindrances, you're able to cover them, you're able to, uh, to counter those and it's, it's a decent operation. You have profits, you send the money abroad. But occasionally, something, some hiccups might happen. Every once in a while, it's possible for you to have some disagreements with so your customers, with your vendors, with your other partners. How do you, how do you stop them? Of course, you can have checks and balances. So, so for us to be able to deal with the conflict resolution situation before it becomes a real challenging issue, and we've got separate presentations to cover those areas as well. But the point here that we would want to make is what Pakistan could do in this country, in, in this scenario, is to uh, give companies the confidence that they have an extensive conflict resolution system process in place that allow them access to the resources that they would need to be able to get on the drawing board, get on the discussion board, get an, on an arbitration kind of a program to, to make sure that their views are heard, to make sure that their grievances are heard, are addressed, and that they get a resolution that, that they deem fit for their uh, for themselves. All right? Okay, let's continue.